We're asked to find the absolute extrema of f of x comma y equals 4x plus 5y within the domain x squared plus y squared less than or equal to 4 squared. Looking at the notes below, the first step is to find the critical points that lie in the bounded region and determine the function values at these points. And then step two is to find the extrema of the function on the boundary. We already solved this problem using the steps outlined here. But in this video for step two, to find the extrema of the function on the boundary, we'll be using Lagrange multipliers instead of calculus one techniques. To begin though, we need to find the critical points of the function f of x comma y in the bounded region. The critical points occur where both first order partial derivatives are equal to zero or undefined. Which means the first step is to find the partial of f with respect to x and the partial of f with respect to y. To find the partial of f with respect to x, we differentiate f with respect to x, treating y as a constant, which gives us four. To find the partial of f with respect to y, we differentiate f with respect to y, treating x as a constant, which gives us five. And now we set these equal to zero and solve as a system of equations. We notice here both are constants, which are never equal to zero, and always defined, which means f of x comma y has no critical points in the bounded region. The next step is to find the extrema of the function on the boundary. And again, for this video, we will do this using the method of Lagrange multipliers. To review the method of Lagrange multipliers, it's given that f and g are differentiable on a specified region and the gradient of g does not equal the zero vector on the curve g of x comma y equals zero. To locate the maximums of f subject to the constraint g, we follow steps one and two, where the first step we determine x, y, and lambda that satisfy the equations. The gradient of f equals lambda times the gradient of g and g of x comma y equals zero. Looking at this equation here, this tells us the max or mins occur when the two gradients are parallel to each other, and this occurs where the level curves of f and g are tangent, which we'll take a look at graphically in just a moment. These two equations result in this system of equations which we solve for x, y, and lambda. And then step two, we determine which solutions produce the maximum and minimum function value. So going back to our question, the objective function is f of x comma y. The constraint is g of x comma y, which on the boundary is x squared plus y squared equals 16 because we need g of x comma y to be equal to zero, we'll say g of x comma y equals x squared plus y squared minus 16 equals zero. Before we set up the system of equations though, let's look at this graphically by looking at the level curves of f and g. The level curves of f of x comma y are blue. The level curve of the constraint is the red circle. Notice how the level curves are tangent at this point and these two vectors here are the gradient of g and the gradient of f. Notice how they are parallel, again, because the level curves are tangent at this point, which means at this point and this point down here is where we will find the max and mins of the objective function f of x comma y using the method of Lagrange multipliers. So let's go ahead and set up our system of equations. We already know the partial of f with respect to x is equal to four and the partial of f with respect to y is equal to five. We also need to find the partial of g with respect to x and the partial of g with respect to y. The partial of g with respect to x is two x. The partial of g with respect to y is two y, which means we need to solve the system of equations. Four equals lambda times two x five equals lambda times two y, and the constraint x squared plus y squared minus 16 equals zero. Let's solve this first equation for lambda by dividing both sides by two x, which gives us lambda equals four divided by two x. Simplifying, we have two divided by x. Solving the second equation for lambda, we have lambda equals five divided by two y. 
because these are both equal to lambda, it follows that two divided by x must equal five divided by two y. Let's solve this equation for y. Because we have a proportion, we can cross multiply. Two times two y equals five times x, which means four y equals five x. Dividing both sides by four, we know y is equal to five fourths x. Now we'll use this equation and perform a substitution into the constraint, which will give us one equation with one variable. Substituting 5 fourths x for y, we have the equation x squared plus 5 fourths x squared minus 16 equals zero. Let's go ahead and solve this equation for x on the next slide. We have x squared plus here we'll have 25 sixteenths x squared. Let's add 16 to both sides of the equation. And then one x squared plus 25 sixteenths x squared is equal to 41 sixteenths x squared. Now let's multiply both sides of the equation by the reciprocal of 41 sixteenths, which is 16 41sts. This gives us x squared equals, 16 times 16 is equal to 256. We have 256 41st. And now we take the square root of both sides of the equation. We already know the square root of 256 is equal to 16, which means x is equal to plus or minus 16 divided by the square root of 41. Now we'll use the equation y equals 5 fourths x to determine the corresponding y coordinates. When x is equal to positive 16 divided by the square root of 41, we have y equals 5 fourths times 16 divided by the square root of 41. Simplifying before multiplying, there's one four and four, and four fours and 16. This gives us y equals 20 divided by the square root of 41. And then when x is equal to negative 16 divided by the square root of 41, y is equal to 5 fourths times negative 16 divided by the square root of 41, which is negative 20 divided by the square root of 41. To determine the extrema of f on the boundary, we need to evaluate f at the point 16 divided by square root 41, comma 20 divided by square root 41. And negative 16 divided by square root 41 comma negative 20 divided by square root 41. And to say some time I've already done this, when both the x and y coordinates are positive, we get four square root 41, which is approximately 25.6125. When both coordinates are negative, we get a function value of negative four square root 41, which is approximately negative 25.6125. So we know the greatest value is the absolute max, and the least value is the absolute minimum, which means this is the absolute max, and this is the absolute min. Going back to the graph one last time, this is the point where we find the absolute maximum of f of x comma y, and this is the point where we find the absolute minimum of f of x comma y. Notice at both points, the gradient of g and the gradient of f are parallel and the level curves are tangent. To record the results, we'll use the exact values and we'll say the absolute minimum is negative four square root 41 and the absolute max is positive four square root 41. I hope you found this helpful.